So the funny thing about the Hannon exercises is that you're looking at all of these notes on the page, and yet, by and large, the way that you actually want to try and learn these, or I should say the method that you want to use to try and learn these, really requires much less of what you're seeing on the page. We actually don't need that many pieces of information to put together these exercises. And yet, of course, you open up the book and you see all of the notes on the page um, and you think that you have to go as you would with any piece, look at them. But the method that we are going to develop is going to show you that we really have many fewer elements to look at to get an effective method to playing these, okay? So the first one we're going to look at is the number one. Um, it's so famous that many young piano players, I hear young piano players playing this and they don't even really know where it comes from. Um, and it's this one that sounds like this. And so on and so forth. Okay, so what we're seeing with this one, which is demonstrative of the rest of the exercises, is that we start with kind of an adjusted close position, whereas our five finger close position is usually this. Instead of that, we're kicking our top fingers up um, one note so that everything is one note adjusted up after the thumb. And then when we come back down, we just bring our thumbs up. So we kind of end up crawling our hand up like this. And pretty much all of the hand and exercises work exactly like this. It's an adjusted version of a five finger position, usually out to a sixth, um, though some of them are, are a little bit different than that. And then the way the exercise is constructed ends up having us crawl up the scale, um, which is a key piece of information we'll talk about shortly. So to do that, you, first thing that you want to do with these, this is that we're not actually quite talking about our method, but a really important first part of this is to make sure that your hands are in the right position, that they are on the notes, um, so that you're not starting in a close position and then having to try and adjust, making sure that you're in the structure position um, that you are going to be in to play these is really quite important because it's really easy to sort of get a little bit horizontally lost, by which I mean miss keys, especially in the later exercises for these, okay? So let's talk about specifically our method. So the hand and exercises consist of two patterns. There is a pattern going up and there is a pattern coming down. And all of the hand and exercises are designed like this. Um, we start with one pattern, we go up about halfway through the, through the whole thing, and then we have a secondary pattern that's helping us descend the same way, okay? I'm going to go ahead and play through the entire first one here that you're seeing um, on your page here. I'm going to play through it just a little bit faster. Once again, as with our previous close position techniques exercises, you should definitely play these a little bit slower until you get used to them. But here is how the first one sounds um, all together. Okay, so let's talk about it. So the way to do this is not to look from measure to measure and read, try and read each of these patterns. The key to learning Hannon is to identify the two patterns and treat them like little segments that you can just move around, that you move up every one step or down one step every time. So you want to spend 80% of your time working on this, looking at these patterns and identifying them. So in the first measure here, you can see we have a whole flurry of finger numbers showing us exactly how the pattern is. And we're going to want to focus much more on this first measure than anything else, because the pattern for all these is this. And that's it. It's, def it's not this. Or anything else. It's not to that first beat. It is just this. And then we're taking that and moving it up for the second measure and moving it up for the third measure. Conversely, if we go down to where we switch over and we have our opposite pattern um, on measure eight there, you can see we have exactly the same thing except switched, which is another very common guise for all of the exercises in the Hannon is they're kind of, the descending pattern is usually some sort of variation, very, very close variation of the first. This one right here, the pattern is this.
And then we just take that and move it down for measure nine. And then again. So this method of patterns, of looking at these patterns, is the way to think about learning all these exercises. Because if you apply that mentality, if you look at first the first pattern going up in the first measure, and the second one in the eighth measure, it's always going to be um, in the in the eighth measure is where the second pattern is going to start. And we'll talk about that in a sec. That is going to be your template. Don't think about trying to learn these like pieces. You want to try and use less of your brain, meaning trying to look at less notes um, so that you can get these going get your hands moving much more efficiently. Thanks for watching this lesson from Liberty Park Music. If you enjoyed this lesson and learned something from it, do us a favor, hit that like button. And if you really liked it, share it around. Let your friends and family check it out too. If you want to find more lessons like this or explore other piano-related topics, please come visit us at libertyparkmusic.com. We have full piano courses ranging from beginner to more advanced levels, and everything is online and streaming 24-7 so that you can design your music learning around your schedule and learn in the comfort of your own home from a talented roster of professional teachers and musicians. Come check us out.